great. I mean, sometimes things just don't line up in the morning. But it's hard. It's tough. hard to get it. A get up. I mean, in the morning. Sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, usually isn't for Dinko, but I guess every now and then it's going to just hit you a little bit hard. You know, you, you can't you, you can't do his morning ritual every single day, can you, Tom? Yeah, I've, heard, I've heard he occasionally takes something for that, but, you know, I don't think well, it's... Uh, Caffeine I heard pills, it's of course. Caffeine more pills. frequent than occasionally. I believe he takes them <laughs> rectally. But anyways, as we look oh, into God. Tiger versus Bren, <laughs> this is a... Uh, <laughs> God, this <yeah>. is... <laughs> Oh, what I just it's a, it's a medical I'm everyone should feel comfortable to take medicine however they feel Look, like don't should, do that know? with caffeine pills please <laughs> never ever do that uh please oh well oh, here we go we're jumping into the game Tom it's about time to get into the match and Tiger they're on the T side starting things off looking for a little bit of aggression out towards long and well pro has shut them down on that one straight away yeah, no, a really nice start for Pro, and hey, he's going to uh, continue it on. It's actually Pappy Chula. Okay, now I'm very confused. Pappy got another kill, then he peeked out and got another one. Okay, I've confused myself a little bit. Pro's still going. No fear. Definitely shouldn't get another kill, but you know what? He's feeling confident. He's feeling like he can take those fights. He's got Derek alongside him. And, well, one hell of a way to kick off this match. It's Bren to get themselves the pistol around. And something I mentioned uh, a little bit in the pre-show... Tiger's CT sides of this map have been something uh, well, to almost avoid your eyes to. I, I don't think they've been good at all. I think the T sides have a lot of the time been Urkis getting like 19, 20 kills to be able to drag them over the line. I'm very surprised at this map choice. I'll be honest. Like I, I think that it's a map that they're okay at. I would say as a third map, no problems. But to pick it when you know that your opponents like to play it as well, that's what confuses me because... I, I think you could have guaranteed this as a third map, right? I, I think that if you really wanted to play it, you could have easily had it as a third. I don't think Bren are going to ban it out. It's the one that they won last time. In fact, they might have even picked it. So to to pick it yourself is peculiar. The only thing I can read into it is that they've worked on improving this map specifically versus Bren after losing it last time. But that is a that that's still a bold pick to make when you could have had a train and i i honestly think brand's train has been one of the worst maps we've seen from a team in, in this tournament like they can't hold the b site at all yeah that's why it's so confusing i mean you just look at the results as well they've lost versus terrible teams anytime they've played someone legit tiger vici tyloo they just get smashed invictus as well so i really don't get it i think as i said they missed a trick on that one for sure and well they're missing a lot more than just tricks on this one they're missing shots pistols can't really do a whole bunch with them and uh, you certainly don't want to walk out with no kills but sometimes that's how it goes as brian come up two to zero and a very convincing early start now they come up against the rifles though tom and this is where things can be a little bit tricky you see though with the investment brand made into majority rifles one scout which i guess is technically a rifle as well they've gotten themselves a a pretty decent start like this third round doesn't see really any disadvantages for them and they have that little bit of extra cash it's the benefit of not losing anybody in the second and especially of not investing into you know four smgs or five as we've seen some teams do much to my dismay so this is this is basically where we need to see Tiger starting to get off the mark. And as I said, if they're looking to, well, firstly get to the final, like I know that's uh, Dinko's prediction, but uh, they have to beat Vici as well. So realistically, Vici are only going to be preparing for one match at the moment, and it's not going to be Bren. They're, they're, they're getting ready for Tiger. So Tiger need to almost win this one cleanly without showing too much, which is not the easiest task in the world. Nonetheless, Bren probably aren't the main team on their radar. That's the other thing for Tiger as well you have to bear in mind. They already know who their next opponent is going to be. It's, it's a bit of a odd thing to have in a playoffs bracket. Obviously, we saw it quite regularly uh, throughout the LAN events last year that uh, we, we had a team go straight through to the semifinals. It makes things a little bit quicker when it comes to the uh, playoffs bracket. Nonetheless, no Dobu's actually going to assist a suicide as Dobu has jumped straight off and while it's left with NCL just about getting the trade, they will get the bomb down with the majority of the players looking to try and make their way back through CT. Anybody playing into mid might just play into the hands of Cabal. 
That's the idea, right? It makes up for the lack of long control that they have. And Cabal, well, he's able to get that kill nice and easy player at his back turn. They know they haven't got long, so they're conscious of a player being there. And that spray just gives it away. As Zerkast comes on through to put down Wits. And this should be the win for Tiger straight away. Nine. Able to easily take another. There you go. Two to one. Tiger with a solid buy round. I do like that approach. You know, a lot of teams have been uh, in this sort of... Uh, in denial sometimes like they won't take long control but then they'll just forget about it or they'll leave it completely open for that retake to come through but this time they make a, a little bit more of a passive stance when it comes uh, down to the short control instead of sit well i guess simultaneously more aggressive and passive because they've got that player who's over towards top mid he can just tuck in and watch it which means then they can focus on ct and long instead of having to commit so heavily towards taking those fights on short Uh, this round, unfortunately for Bren's not going to be a hefty investment. Cabal, bit of a wild spray, chance to pick up a rifle. They've got the bomb there, so realistically we can't see too much of a reface to try and kill off that player. You don't want to see the bomb. <laughs> okay, I was going to say dropped, but it has been. Pro, he's just coming up trumps with the eagle. He's now left in mid. That's him dead. It seems to be the cursed AK. Whenever it's retrieved, the person then dies with it. Uh, a little bit of a shrouded vision off the back of the Molotov is actually going to hand NCO a kill. I don't know why he's still fighting this. Like, realistically, uh, maybe Dover just wanted to get back to zero kills, but it, just just go get that bomb down. It, it's not worth throwing away another life and potentially giving away a, a two-on-one. I'm just checking out the poll here on Twitter, Tom. PGL tweeted out a poll of Tiger versus Bren, and 69% uh, voted for Tiger. <laughs> I voted for Tiger. Um, I think I was the first. I, I, it was it said 100% when I voted, so. There you go. Well, 69% in the end have decided to go for Tiger, and I think that's uh, quite shocking to me, honestly, that it's that low. I would think that they are relatively heavy favorites coming into this match. But obviously, Tom, uh, too many people out there have been hurt in the past. They've seen the inconsistencies. They've seen the problems. He's just on an individual level. I mean, yes, Derek, look, he's the, the shining light of Brand. He's the one that does the heavy lifting the majority of the time. But they need so... There's so many more win conditions alongside him that need to show up. And I, I don't believe in that, to be honest. I think that uh, if you see both of these teams on poor form, Tiger are the one that take it then. So it's only if Brand come in on the best form of the tournament that they managed to win this matchup. Well, that's what we're going to be hoping for here. I'd like to see a good showing from Bren. Of course, this is still one of those matches that... It, it's weird. It eliminates you from the tournament, but you do still have to play another match for some extra moolah. I think for both the teams we've seen go down, or the first team we've seen go down, it's expected, from the beginning of the tournament at least. This round, though, a little bit of a back and forth. Pro's been putting up some pretty hefty numbers, but a few of the normal heavy hitters are missing. Derek potentially being one of them, and now Wits trying to put his stamp on this match. Bombs down. One versus two on the B site. Never an easy task, but especially in these sort of circumstances when utility's been expended to slow him down. There also isn't a kit, but I wouldn't be overly surprised if there was one somewhere on the site. We'll never know, as he is not going to get anything done. Dobu gets his third kill of the game. And you might think, yes, I know. I didn't know it says he's two and three, but he did uh, <laughs> have an unfortunate fall. He humpty dumpty <laughs> off the you, short wall. Were you injured at work and it wasn't your fault? <laughs> well, it kind of was his fault. He did jump off a two-story balcony. He wouldn't have died if he wasn't shot, though. I don't think that's True. his fault. I don't know. No, I'm not 100% sure, but I don't know if injury lawyers for you works for uh, for terrorists. I'll be honest, Hello, I don't I think they do. shot in the face. <laughs> we was don't cover that. <laughs> blow up a bomb site and some some counter-terrorist shot me. Well, don't know we'll get that through the courts, to be honest. I do see some objections. I, I, I wouldn't be the one to object. Yeah, no, just... Just put the AK down, and uh, we can agree to whatever terms you need. 
Not the bomb, of course. You can keep that. Just the A carry. That's all I'm scared oh, of. Oh, the timing! Uh, Nine's now going to get a TK as well. Another kill removed. And Dobu, well, he's just gone right up to the top of the board. Six kills for him. Four on the ball for Tiger as well. As said, though, like, I expect them to win this T side. And them winning this T side for anybody at home does not mean they're going to win the map. I still remember them versus Checkmate on one of the first days of the tournament. 10-5 half. Lost. I think they lost convincingly yeah. as well. And that was even with Urkus getting like, I, th I think he ended on 22 kills, but he got 19 of them in the first half. So that's where their weaknesses have been. Yeah. I think we've seen in the past, especially that Nine, although is a decent AWPer, definitely not on the level of some of the other players. Like if we look at a Dan King or a Kaze, uh, he's, he's not quite matched up in that regard. And I think that's definitely a problem on some other maps. Maybe that's why they didn't go for train. But I still would have preferred to see it. But this is going relatively well so far. Money's starting to build up on their side of things as well. And this buy is still not particularly good. I don't know if this is the CT side investing far too much money. I have to bear in mind, they've lost four rounds in a row. So they are getting towards maximum loss bonus. And one of their players still doesn't have enough money to buy. Less than ideal for sure, Tom. And I mean, you, you know, you look at Tiger. I gotta say, just on that point of the op and pick and train. Sure, maybe you, you don't go there uh, versus some teams because you think you'll be outgunned in the oping department. Wits, though. Yeah, I get your point. Yeah, exactly. I I don't think that's somewhere that you'd be too afraid. Like he he is decent at times and he has some great games, but I to be honest. Last season, he was way worse. This time, I think he's, he's definitely improved. <laughs> so, so by next season, he'd be amazing. <laughs> no, but it, I got to give him props because he has improved. And the brand team in general has improved. Um, the the thing for me, you know, you look at these guys. I always like Jao in this lineup. I think he was a, a really good player, but Micro's filling a, a decent role. I just want to see a little bit more from them. I'm looking forward to next season, next season or more event but for now wits well we talked about the opping duel and he's not won it nines just wrecked him on that wide swing derek it's ticked away by the molly but he makes a brave play going up towards the top of the ramp they suspect it but he's still able to get one kill fades to the site but that's where urcast was waiting for him and now able to find the kill leaves it just down to pro who has already picked up one in this 1v3 he's had a good start to this game and then that can be enough sometimes for him to have that hero level performance not normally one of their heavy hitters but we have witnessed it a couple of times and that's a really nice shot uh, a bit of an overface if anything from nine but it doesn't matter urkus he's that stable rock on the site he's gonna get himself a fifth kill in this game and more importantly a fifth round for bren and we are gonna see again a, a few minor investments coming up for the side of Bren, just to, trying to invest a little bit into this round to try and do some extra damage. And they made the last one costly, at least. You'll see a few reinvestments. In fact, NCL, I, I think he wants to try and make a little bit of that cash back. There, I catch you going to peek in front of the smoke. The nade, oh, that's unfortunate. I think it went in between a couple of players. It didn't actually do anywhere near as much damage as it could have done if it was a second before or a second after. Now, for Bren, this kind of round is null and void, really. And it's kind of scary, right? Six to two, most probably going to be on the board. It all comes down to Derek, whether that's going to be the case or not. And, I mean, the dude has got a scout, and most of the T's are coming along. So, an opportunity there for sure. He's just spraying through that smoke, but as he swings a little wider, gets a little more eager to find some kills. Well, again, he just finds that AWP of nine, who's consistently been opening up this site whenever they do manage to get control down towards the pit. It seems like he's uh, he's ready for these overfaces of Bren. Now, obviously, in this round, you've got a scout. You want to try force those fights. Well, accept it, Tom, but if they do it in the next... Well, that's where we're going to have a problem. Nice shot from Pro. And it, it's definitely good to see him performing decently, but at the same time, 
that's not really had too much in terms of actual impact. Like he's just making these rounds very, very costly for his opponents. And it seems like it's more just them hunting him down a little bit too much. Bro, you don't need to take this fight. He does still manage to get a second kill with the Deeg. Or second with the AK, one with the Deeg before that. Want to see him bring this AK into the next round. I said there's been a, a few players slightly overspending in a few of these rounds, but this will be at least a decent four buy from them. If they fancy a double up, they can invest into it. Although I'm, I'm not sure they're really going to be the team to do it. Like, I can't think of a particularly convincing secondary orb for this squad. Micro as well. Th this is one of the maps mainly, I think, where we see the biggest weaknesses from them because... Again, he, he doesn't look comfortable on the beat side. He, he doesn't look comfortable in many of the roles it seems like the squad have tried to put him into, and that can sometimes be an issue with a new player. But he doesn't necessarily seem like one that is a, a supportive player. It seems like he's just being put in a supportive role. I'm curious about Wits's hold. I want to see more aggression on long in this round, Tom. And it looks like that's what we're going to see. Four players going here early. Wits coming around with the AWP, but there's no one there this time. A bit of a refocus from Tiger. Now, we've seen their short control over A, but it's a very fast play. Straight down to the bottom of mid. Good trade to Wits. Smoke off. And I don't even think they're going to go B off this. Well, certainly not with the short aggression, with the bomb moving down through short now as well. But Derek spotted this. I think he's just heard the steps, and he's realized what's going on. But as they lose the A side, this is chaotic. Well, already. Bomb's going to be planted. CT side actually in with a good opportunity this time. And some fairly aggressive angles being taken by the attacking side. But nonetheless, they are now going to cross back and open plant. It, it should really be possible from this point onwards. But as I said, we've seen some fairly aggressive faces. I like all the counter flashes that they're throwing out. They're just making things very awkward for the CTs as they start to retake. Dobu is going to connect the first with the AWP, and in the end, the crossfire is enough. Tiger again strutting across this T side. Seemingly not really even breaking a sweat, although, as said, a, a few of these rounds have been close. If you look at the numbers in terms of the actual rounds, they're not that close at all. And already gliding their way towards a half victory, Bren need to show something here. Because even if we're going to see a poor T side from Tiger, right, Mitch? Two rounds isn't enough. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think it is, Tom. I don't think it quite is. When you look at Bren, you know, their T side, yeah, I don't know. Even a poor CT side from Tiger, I don't know if Bren will be able to match up to it just pound for pound. This man here, Derek, he's been a big force, as we said, but with just deagles in their hands not a lot he can hope for really it, the onus is on pro to come through and really deliver with this off it's a big weapon to have and if he can at least save it that wouldn't be too bad but instead <laughs> he does what they've done so many times on this a side and wide swings on long and guess what happens they get opt again. This time it's not by nine, it's by Cabal. And evidently even his, at times, atrocious offing is enough to shut them down. Tom, I don't get it. I, like, we know that's wide swinging on... One thing is for sure, when they give up control of A-Long, Tiger get into the pit. And one other thing is for sure is that that AWP is in the pit. It's been there every time they've gone for long control. And of the last, what, five rounds, at least three of them have featured a player on brand wide swinging on the A-site and getting dropped by that AWP. Now, when you've got it the first time, fair enough. You're trying it. You see what they're doing. P90? That's okay. Then you do it with a scout. But why would you do it with the one AWP that you've gotten around? Why would you buy a P90? Another great question. Can't give you an answer to that, Tom. What? Yeah. No, I, I think the thing that annoys me about that round, it obviously it's one where you could expect the orc to take some riskier plays. Pro might not have necessarily seen what have been happening to his teammates over the last few rounds. The thing that frustrates me is they all peak one by one. Like, if, if two of them run through the smoke and he peaks with the orc, there's a high chance they get a kill off the back of that. If he peeks, then another guy peeks the same angle, and then another one runs through the smoke. You've all just handed away individual kills versus rifles. That's just silly. That's just not even team play. So, 
do that together and I, I can get behind it. I can at least give you a reason as to why you did it. But do it one by one and, well, you deserve to get killed like you did. Well, double op setup, a P90, an AUG, and a M4. One M4 on the CT side. Not something I particularly wanted to see. But, uh, you know, maybe it'll work. Maybe there's some magic left. Pappy will, will all you know, prove us all wrong. Pappy's P90. Maybe the P stands for Pappy. Pappy 90. There you go. <laughs> I'm trying to find a reason. I had, I had, yeah. I've not had to watch this gun too often in competitive play. I know that I think Furio were messing around with it a little bit. Maybe Pappy's been watching them, but I also feel like they might have just got a little bit bored and did it for the meme. Um, there we go. Already, one player's going to jump down into CT. That's going to make things very difficult for any rotations and leave the remaining players towards this B site out to dry. Pro is going to manage to find one, though. He's, he's, as I said, he's looked very good so far in this match. Dobu might be the surprise factor, though, although he's throwing a Molotov, and that might give it away. And NCL's also been caught. Now, NCL got far more aggressive than I would have liked holding in that connector or in the CT spot. And I think he's actually the reason they lose the round. Like, your job in CT is to stop players rotating. If you wide peek, they can rotate. And he died... Not, not even like just on the edge, like on the corner of CT. Well, you can see it there. He died in the middle. Yeah, it was it was silly, especially after they'd already lost the player on B. That's the point where the aggression in your head should just be pulled back and go for a tamer approach. But evidently, he he believed in the strat. He went all out, and it it has not paid so off. So many not angles you can slightly. die from there as well. I don't... Yeah, it was it was silly. It was absolutely silly. I don't understand. You know, when I look down towards the, the position now for Tiger, though, 8-3, they're not worried. I think they're a team that could afford to go for a full P90 rush for the memes and just see how it goes. I don't it think they are. I don't think their CT side's very good. But no, I, I, <laughs> as we said, you know, they will definitely struggle on the CT side, uh, but the reality is, do Bran have what it takes to punish them? And That's true. I don't know. If they get to 10, 11 rounds, I don't think so. And they've got, I wouldn't say plenty to play with, but considering how the things have been going so far, they've got plenty to play with. I like this aggressive stance by Derek, but he has to come up huge. Oh, I don't like this oh, yeah, aggressive no, stance. <laughs> maybe, maybe a little bit too far. He obviously doesn't know how many players are on the other side, but this makes you very uncomfortable. They look away from the flash, though, and they all line up for Derek. He's going to get a triple kill from there. That's unbelievable. We'll make that the fourth. Are we going to get a, a second ace today already? It's left on to Dobu to jump down, and he's going to meet Pappy. It's a 4K for Derek. These are the sort of rounds we love to see from him so far in this tournament. I'm surprised he got away with as much, though. The first kill, understandable. Even the second, but the third player was running backwards and trying to jump away. That's, that's interesting. And then Cabal, well, he, did, he just was hoping that he'd eventually be the one to get the trade, but... Yeah, I, that, that's a couple of rounds in a row now where Tiger... Like, sure, if he gets two there, I'm like, well done. Well done. That was great, Derek. Four? <laughs> a little bit much, right? I, I really, really respect the the changeup. Because as I said previously, when we were looking at Wits coming here early, was that I wanted to see more aggression on that long hold. And I feel like they've given way too much space towards Tiger. And that changeup was exactly what they needed. Now you can see for a second, Derek took the aggression to the extreme. He went to wide swing on it, but then decided better of it and just tucked up at the door. Perfectly done. The flash came over. It was behind him and he was just able to absolutely shred these guys. Something that Tiger were not expecting at all. And that is a real forced pump of the brakes. I mean, at the moment, Tiger were in a spot where they wanted to go to what worked, right? Getting the long control, waiting for the player to inevitably swing out on the A site and give them that two-man advantage. But the change up of the holds has caused them now to rethink their strategy completely. And instead, they're looking in towards the B site, somewhere that they haven't had any success so far. But with that change up of the long hold, they don't want to mess with Derek anymore. And you know what? I don't blame them. 
Yeah, I, I feel like they also haven't had a full commit towards the B site yet. They just had that weird round where one player's like managed to get into CT, then one pushes, then another one tries to peek. Like it, we've not seen a full execute onto the B site. And as said, it's been a weakness for a lot of teams so far this tournament. Pro, he's getting forced out of the back. The Molotov's gonna kill him. There's no escape at this point. And with Micro going down without anything getting done. That is the B-Site firmly under the control. And, and and that's always the fear for me with Brent. Is I, I don't like to harp on one player. But there are too many matches now. It's just there's, there's too big a sample size of matches where Micro does nothing. Like, it, he'll have one or two where he's like, oh, he got a 20-kill game. Maybe this is the, the time where he's finally going to show that he's the right replacement. And then there's like eight games in response where the answer is evidently no. And as said, I don't think that he's a comfortable site hold. I think that they've even started switching things up, as you saw there, having Pro deep within the site and having Micro as, like, the, the sort of lurk player. But ultimately, it's not working. I mean, it, 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 whatever they're doing is not working. And either that means that he's going to have to be replaced or they're going to have to try and move him around a bit. Oh, man. I mean, look, Bren's basically getting a lifeline because uh, this should have been like a 10 to 3. Uh, no, what am I talking about? A 12 to 3. And I feel like Tiger, you know, they had a couple of hiccups. It's been some really good positions by Bren. They've gotten themselves into definitely spots where they deserve to win the rounds that they have. But at the same time, Tiger have, have walked into the... Oh, this is an aggressive, very aggressive play by Wits. Now, I don't know what that was based off of, Tom. There's a smoke down. Like, th that's an Xbox smoke. So that's going to give away. Probably these players are pushing short, right? You wide swing that with an op. Odds are you get traded. Obviously, you didn't expect the player to be in suicide where he was, but still. I failed to see where what information came through on the CT side that they thought that was their best Ooh. play. Is he, is he gonna keep going? Uh, even up, cause he's like, ah, I've seen this one before. You're gonna keep trying to push me. And the rest of the team in the meantime have managed to get aggressively on towards this A site. And once the bomb's gone down, Tiger have looked unstoppable. It, it's mainly been the moments beforehand and they've chucked it over to try and get the cross onto the site. And although Pappy's holding into long, he's expecting Urkus to be there. Urkus left a long time ago. Went to join up with the rest of the squad. Am I getting one of those games again? It, it seems like when Urkus has to hard carry, he does when he doesn't need to. He normally has some of the quieter performances. Like he's able to lurk a bit more. Uh, he reminds me in a sense of the way Azza plays. Like if 100 Thieves are, are having a bad game, Azza will go, all right, guys, get get in the backpack. Go on, get get in the backpack. And like, what do you mean? He's like, I'm going to win us a round. And then he'll just run down mid and kill everyone. Like, it, it, just just watch the way they play. It makes absolutely no sense. But if, if it's going bad for 100 Thieves, there'll be two rounds or three rounds that are just solely won by Azza. And I, I think Urkus is definitely within that same bracket where when when his, when his the younger players, when the star players aren't performing, he just goes, get in the backpack and I'll, I'll take us for a ride. And uh, yeah, in this game, he hasn't needed to. Like, everybody's performing. It's been a solid performance across the board. Couple of rounds here and there where... Like their NCL questionable decision and obviously getting sprayed down by one man in long. But other than that, Tiger have had a relatively easy time. And if you lose two rounds excluding the pistol, are you having a pretty good half? Oh, 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 uh, uh, Tom? I don't know if you could explain what, what we've just seen there from Derek, uh, but with a man disadvantage. Walking through mid doors, maybe, um, maybe not the play. There was also an op spamming down, so he like he knew that player was there. He knew he was watching mid doors, and then he peeked it. I don't care if you've got an op in your hand or not. That is that is a crazy play, and one that they've rightfully been punished for. Eleven to four at the halftime. Tiger leading by a significant margin, and I think there is very little hope for Bren at this stage. I mean, we have seen Tiger slip off when it comes to CT holds. I 100% agree, Tom, but they won two buy rounds there for Bren, yeah. and in those was like Derek having a 4K shutdown of long, 
I I don't see this going their way at all. I mean, they would have to turn things around massively. And even though Derek won them around, and Pro's been the one that's doing most of the work, 17 on the board. It's, uh, I mean, it's been consistent from him. The only problem is most of the rounds where he's getting a kill, no one else is. Yeah, and, and a lot also, he was getting a lot of Deagle kills in rounds that are ultimately already done. So, the sure his statistics look great, and he's had a couple where it, they probably should have won it, but... Ultimately, it doesn't matter too much. Now we move into the CT side, looking to take home that pistol and pretty much close out their map choice. As said, the last time they played this, I'd see, I'm almost starting to question if I'm right at this point because I'm pretty sure Brem won it. I've said it multiple times. I even checked it earlier, but it doesn't feel like a team that previously won this. A bit better from Wits and Pro. And in fact, they've actually forced Urkus out of the site. Now they've already used any utility they had. Other than, of course, the kit. But, well, the bomb needs to go down for that to be utilized. Now we're going to see an afterplant position. Now the T's are actually in a relatively good spot here. We're going to see Wits close out nine already. Urkus and Dobu desperately trying to find a way back in. But ultimately, this comes down to Dobu. Can he hit some tasty shots? The first one's for free. I'm not sure what the crossfire was that he's able to do that. And now Urkus down to one versus one. This bomb, he can just defuse. Oh, it's pro get. He should get there in time. He, he should have this. He should have it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's a uh, number one, a horrible plant spot, and number two, a horrible <laughs> crossfire. But they get it. They make it work, Mitch. They make it work. They do. I don't think they should have, but they do. That's <laughs> <laughs> one of those situations, Tom. Uh, this whole round's just been a, a little bit of a mess. So. <laughs> Like putting ten players into a jar. I love and how Derek it. was in such an aggressive position. You could, you know, for a fact that he punched his desk when, when, when he died from window. It's like, <laughs> what are you looking at? I feel like a round like that though is like, uh, it's like putting a mixture of paprika and chili into a tub with some chicken diced up and you, you shake it around right you put the lid on because you're gonna get it everywhere otherwise and you shake it you shake it like crazy tom and then you ask me well is this more covered in chili or paprika i don't know they look the same it's random but somebody won there's more of something on the chicken no, and i don't know what it is i've got a better one it's, it's the same concept you you get the chili you get the paprika but then you snort it up your nose so, <laughs> which one hurt more <laughs> no 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 not even that just the round was painful <laughs> all right okay <laughs> what i'm saying is we've had a winner uh but i think if you looked at that round you removed the names you, or you look at the round without con uh, understanding of counter-strike it would be hard to define the winner at that because i think we all lost having to watch it well, but uh-huh uh have this you got a positive looking, this, note? Yeah, no, this is looking like it's going to be a, a relatively close one in itself. They've not checked for NCL. Oh They've still got the scout. Oh so much damage being done. Cabal sat at the back of the oh side. My. He's going to get another one. And it's left all onto Micro. We we're talking over this like it would be an easy one for Brem, but the fact is it was oh not. Cabal combines with NCL. Corner's not checked. Scout shots hit. And Tiger, they don't even give them a moment's notice. Straight back onto the board. And that that should be GG. Well, it's not how you want the second round to go, Thomas. Like that, that's that's shocking, especially against such a weak buy. Rush out B, but not really rush it. Kind of half rush it so the Deagle can get one kill at a time. No trades possible until it's already way too deep. Scout support from the back not dealt with. Utility not really used. I mean, I feel I, it's like you're given this advantage at the start, but you feel bad. So you're like, well, let, let's give him a chance. Let's even the playing field a little bit. You're not supposed to be nice to you. Well, they've yet. Yeah, well, they're even in the playing field too much here. <laughs> Pros just killed Papi Chulo. I think he was dead to the SMG, anyways. Maybe the logic there, Tom, right? That was a 600 IQ play. So he was like, well, he's going to get some extra money for the SMG kill. So instead, I'll kill you so he doesn't get it. That's what it was. Big brain plays. Oh. Just to be clear, I don't believe that. <laughs> oh, Cabal's in trouble. Someone's come along and burst his bubble. Stuck in the corner. <laughs> Dovu does manage to find a kill back. Still, obviously, a, a huge advantage for them based off the weaponry. This is pretty much a full investment as well. 
from the T side. Derek hoping to try and pull off a miracle. Nice shot onto nine. He's given a little bit of extra space, but of course the rifle from Urkus is not going to clean things up, bro. He's only got one bullet left. He's going to have to switch over to the Deagle, and he's being slowly tapped away. 13 for Tiger. And there's not even investment coming in from this Bren side going into this next round. It's as we said, Tom, really, this is uh, not something which is inspiring for Brent. And I think you have to look then positively on the decision of Tiger to pick this map. Like, it has worked out well. I still don't agree with it. I never agree with Pick and Dust 2. Um, but in this instance, it's certainly paying off. And as well as the fact that, obviously, Dust 2 in general, no team is ever going to be uncomfortable with. It brings less depth, at least to the early round strategy. Obviously, it massively tests your in-game leader and your, your mid-round calls are going to be... It's got Joe Brez. He yeah, has, but they're Joe back. Joe Brez and no armor. Interesting. I do like me some Julies, although... I'm not sure they're going to be the biggest success in this round. Come on, I'm on a Julies kill. Let's go. Uh, oh, de wait, Derek's still standing. It's okay. It's still on. It's still on. It's, I definitely believe in this play. Come oh. on, Derek. Oh. Come on. He's hit some damage, but ultimately it's not enough. I don't think he even oh. hit damage. He might have hit 20 no, HP. No, he did. I definitely. Because <laughs> uh, uh, Nine walked out of there with 74 HP, and he was the one he was shooting at. So that's uh, It's not ideal, but sure, look, it is what it is. These things happen. Fourteen to five. It this is this is kind of crazy. Like I, I have to say, I, I didn't expect this to be so dominant. I, I know I've mentioned it many a time, but uh, the last time these two pl teams played this map, which was a couple of weeks ago, it was sixteen twelve in favor of Bren. They got 11 rounds. It was, it was, that was the match. It was 10-5 in favor of Tiger. Then they got 11 rounds over on their T side. Very impressive T side, in fact. Unfortunately, they, they've gone slightly worse over on their CT side and have yet to show anything on the T side. It's not been impressive at all. They, they threw away a pistol victory. NCL is so blind. And although a man ran through the Molotov, I was going to say he didn't find the kill, but it doesn't matter. He's eventually taken down NCL. Urk is getting very aggressive. He's not checked lower tunnels. Eric might be about to find a free kill. In fact, though, Urk is, Well, there you go. There's the one back. They've not spotted him. And he's going to go for a little bit more, but eventually is traded by Wits. I'm trying to look at... So for Tiger at the moment, they've lost control over a -Long. They want to go aggressive in towards uh, the tunnels. I, I think it's a, a good call. You're going to get a lot of information off that once the smoke fades. See that nobody's here, but is it going to come in in time to get that full rotate? They've realized now it's not B. I mean, they've pushed all the way through to T-spawn. Essentially, nobody spotted. This is where I would think Dobu would rotate up to site. But he's staying down quite passive in CT. And by the time he starts to move, which is now, it's a little bit too late. Bren are already out long, and he's only going to be able to cut them off as they cross. They're still holding down aggressive short control. I guess they've got a couple extra seconds of a rotate, but they just haven't reacted off the information as they could have. That nade could be fantastic. Half HP taken off. Nine's able to tickle wits up a little bit more, but now it's a save. No. We're going. I don't think that should have oh. been a call to still commit to it. Left all on to Cabal. Yeah. It was bold. Um, I guess they're so far in the lead at this point that they're just trying to close things out as quickly as possible, but... Yeah, but it was a, a little bit much for my liking as well. They, they definitely could have kept a couple of weapons in. Clearly feeling very confident, and I don't particularly blame them with the current scoreline that we're witnessing. 
And they will have enough to buy into the next round. It's not going to be the prettiest of buys. A few pieces missing here and there, but they do have a double orb set up. Now, Cabal, he's just looking to be the rock of this B site. In fact, he's about to come under a fair bit of pressure. The full squad are going to go through the B tunnels. This is not something you see very often. No mid control, no nothing. They just want to try and pick up the pace. And they've been spotted. Incendiary goes down. Counter Molotov's have been thrown out. In fact, they're going to burn. A second player killed off by Cabal. And somehow he's still alive. I, I have no idea how. This man was wide facing into tunnel with an AWP. And even when his teammate rotates in, he's still the one surviving. It's oh no! Well... Ironically, the song stuck in my head was I'm Still Standing by Elton John. And uh, I don't think it'll be playing for Cabal anytime soon. I can't believe, I can't believe Dine's just done that. I don't, <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, well, they've completely given up the A site. The T's are going to go rotating all the way back around. Nine looking to watch the cross, which they don't have a smoke for, by the way. They're getting across. This is actually going to be relatively difficult. And Molotov will be able to remove a little bit of the vision. But ultimately, I expect Nine to be hitting this shot. It shouldn't be a particularly difficult one. They might even just make the decision to try and wide face him. Because even a flash is not going to blind him for long enough for them to get across the angle. And they are just going to face him. In fact, he does miss the shot. Nine, these are kills you need to be getting. You've already taken down your teammate with a nade. You can't afford to just allow them to cross onto the site. Now it becomes an afterplant position. An AWP alongside Dobu's rifle. And interestingly, Dobu's the one that's gone towards long. I, I, I would have kind of expected it to be the other way around. But nine, he's acting as that distraction. Derek is taking a lot of damage. So is Pro. A Dobu, he's basically looking to do this all on his own. His teammate hasn't exactly helped too much. Derek, low on HP, a Dobu will somehow win them that round. Honestly, Mitch, I have absolutely no idea how they managed to, to win that one. That that was like some sort of slapstick routine coming out of Tiger. <laughs> but even still, I, I guess we're, we're all laughing in the end. Not all of us. I would say seven of us. There's another five that are going to be understandably disappointed. Uh, Blair was definitely laughing. That's true. That's true. Well, we'll make it eight. I don't know about Dinko. He's probably preoccupied at the moment. Hopefully, though. Watching Wang demos. Well, exactly. I mean, there's one thing we know. It's that Ooh. Dinko is dedicated to the job he has of working with Wang, getting him uh, into a position where he's a better player. I respect that. You know, spends all his free time watching it's Wang. It's a hard job, but someone's got to do it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, we look into the position 15 to 6, and... For Tiger, there's no way they lose this. As I said, you know, they should be winning this series 2-0, clean as can be. And this is a good start to it, definitely. We see the, the playoff form of Tiger. They finally found their claws. Now it's just time to see if they can actually close this one out or if they're going to make us wait a little bit longer and give Bren that tiny boost of confidence. If they can manage to string together a couple of rounds towards the end of this map, maybe it'll help them out in the next. Yeah, this is, of course, the map choice of Tiger. So Inferno is coming up next, but I'm not sure it's going to be an easy road. Both teams having their problems on that map for sure. Smoke actually going to be going on to the right side, maybe trying to negate the AWP a little bit if they do go in that direction. Further nades being expended, but they are looking to try and go towards this A site. And there's actually nobody on it. It, it looks like the CT side have just dedicated themselves straight to this retake already. 30 seconds left on the clock. It seems like Urkus is going to have that realization, and they really are trying to hold on to long. The rotation eventually will come in from Dobu to try and support, maybe make a bit of a distraction. And there's the flashbang out. Urkus is only going to get one. In fact, the spray's a bit whiffed. It's going to go over to Micro, who's just come up with a double kill off the back of a Mac 10. I didn't expect that to happen, and Nine's also lost the duel elsewhere. Again, Mitch, this is a save, although NCL... Can he get away? He's, he dedicated himself quite far into the site. It looks like he'll be okay, though. Yeah, this is something I've spoken to a lot of pro players, and they've said that when you're in this position, you know, you're know you clearly going to lose a map 15-6. Obviously, you're going to play for every single round, but 
you know, right? No one sat here going, oh, we're going to win this. Don't worry. Like, you know, more than likely you're not going to come out on top. Just random uh, rounds, random approaches will probably win you something like what we saw from Derek, you know, find a 4K. You will get quite lucky if you manage to come back from it. But I haven't spoken to a lot of pros, you know, when they're in these positions where they know that more than likely the map is already lost, they do still like to play for every single round because it's it's all about confidence. It's the mental game that you can come back into. And I think that's something that Tiger are in danger of allowing Brand. Like, if you were to wreck them 16-6, they've gotten a couple rounds here and there, but they know that they've been completely schooled. Whereas if you now allow them to get back in 16-9, 16-10, they can, in their own heads, have this narrative of, well, you know, we were slow to start. But we got back into it towards the end. Now we're warmed up. Now we can win. And you just do not want to give a team that confidence or that locker room motivational speech. Someone just pulls out an Al Pacino and all of a sudden they're back up there ready to win in the second second half. A lot of map control taken by the, the CT side here. They, they've gone all the way into lower tunnels. There's a big chance that NCL could be up for a free kill here. Uh, oh, dear Lord. That's great. <laughs> so he didn't even get the kill. Dobu got the kill. Oh, God. NCL's having a bit of a rough one. Nice shot actually coming out on the other side. Nine. I, where's that come from? He dinged up one through the floor. He's killed off another. Now, Cabal's going to clear out long, but th this could actually be a problem because they've completely given up the B-site and there's nobody long. So the bomb's on shore. One player's made his way into middle. Cabal's still clearing an angle that, where there's absolutely no one, so he's now going to go scurrying back to try and find out the information of where the remaining two are. Derek's been spotted in middle, but that could be a free kill for Cabal. Looking to try and find the angle here. He doesn't know where the second player's going to be in Eric, he swings around and gets a tasty little headshot. It's now left all on to nine. He has a decent idea of where the remaining two players are going, but bear in mind this man has a deagle and no armor. He needs to connect both bullets. First shot missed. And that's actually going to be just one player crossing without the bomb. It doesn't matter, though. Wits will eventually close it. A round of opportunities for Tiger. That uh, really could have been it. But instead... Uh, a few slip-ups here and there alongside some tasty deeks and Bren. It's still surviving, at least. Just about, but versus a buy they were up against, it should have been cleaner. This one must be clean, because they're up against just USPs. And again, we talk about that, the 16-9, the 16-10. Well, it's almost guaranteed at this point, and I feel like Tiger, again, given their opposition that opportunity to feel comfortable coming onto their next map, which is not what you want to see. I mean, the difference in the mental game of being 16-9 versus 16-6 is completely different. And you get the morale up a whole bunch and all these USP shots, they're not landing. They're failing to connect onto the 10 HP and the low HP players, leaving Cabal by himself in order to attempt a 1v5. Now, I think realistically, he'll just play for exits at this point. The opportunities are there if the right person comes out the door, but reality is they'll probably just save in the pit i think up against usps i don't want to see them move anywhere near the doors this next round that's the thing if if bren managed to get to double digits then i might actually start to worry a little bit for tiger because they because they've been some sort of silly slip up so far in this ct side and we've already said it before like the last team time these two teams played they managed to get themselves 10 rounds in the first half, and then they lost. Same scenario. Obviously, they've done even better here by manag managing to win the force by second round and streak some extras in to get them to 15. So it would have to be overtime. But it, the one sort of difference, I would say, for Bren is the fact that they've been here before. They, they already know that they can drag back these rounds. I like the fact that Tiger are actually going to take a tactical pause here. Slow things down a little bit. Think about maybe the, the extra nuances to their purchase and also what they actually want to plan to do here. Because realistically, thus far, Bren have actually been quite dynamic. They've been switching up where they go every single round. We've seen a, a risky play towards the B site in one of them, but as a full five, which I said is fairly peculiar. You can even see from Cabal's read in the last round, he was expecting them to go towards long, which they didn't. So 
potentially Tiger are going to go for maybe a bit of a gamble stack. I wouldn't mind if they three-man long early in the round, but with some of the decisions that Brand have been making thus far on their T side, it would be a pretty hefty risk. I do expect to see aggressive long control from Tiger purely because they went there so frequently when it came down to their C, uh, their T side that it feels like it's it's an integral part of the map for them. But oddly, they've gone for the two-man short push after boosting one up, and then one smoke on long forces back the hand of Urkast, who doesn't want to overcommit to long control by himself, and instead comes over to support his teammates. I thought he was going to play side and spot long, but no, he's actually playing further down and towards CT to cut off anybody splitting through middle as they lose Dobu. They know there's another player on short. They know that op is there. And so I think for Brent, it's a very valuable opening kill, but there's still a decision to be made on how they want to approach this. And it looks like, at least from Micro's position, that they wanted to deal with the op over towards short, but he has now fallen back. They're going to completely concede that map control and instead look for long, which is the weakness of Tiger. It's what they've given up. And so Bran are definitely making the right call on this one. Interesting they've actually thrown the deep smoke into CT really early. Like the, By the time they get there, it's going to be completely pointless. So I don't know if that was a, a misplay or if they are just trying to bait out their opponents a little bit. NCO has spotted a man in lower tunnels, which is mainly the rotator. And now they don't have another smoke. What, what's the plan here? That this is mistake. such a silly round from Brent. Yep. They wasted the smoke for no reason. And now they're just handing kills to Urkes. They've left the bomb on the ground. And nine, no. well, he's just I trying to hold on to the cross. I, I, I don't know. His he, he could have easily was... helped out Urkes, but instead he decides to hold back. And that, that might just be the round right there. Like him deciding the not to take the peak. He's going to be flanked out as well. This is this is GG. That was silly. That was so... What? I'm going to hold for them going sight while Urkast is flashed in the open. Swing and help him, for God's sake. That's just stupid. And then you look at Brando. Okay, they throw the smoke deep. As you said, maybe they're trying to fake it. Why do they flash over long then? It's like, oh, let's make them think we're coming A, but then we're faking. Oh! I'm going to fly. Hey, we're on long. We're coming into long. Like, what's the point of that? They know well, you're coming so now. You've why no smoke not do for the that cross. same deep smoke again? <laughs> well, true. Exactly. You, you know the one. smoke. Like, just, just... You, uh, I don't know. That whole round was bizarre. <laughs> what's this? <laughs> the mushroom cloud smoke. <laughs> uh Oh, this is, this is a bit of a fantastic match for Counter-Strike. I'm losing hope. I really am. Tiger, what are you doing, you lunatics? Like, how, how do they lose to that? How do they lose to the strategy Bran employed in the previous round? Why are they not playing off each other? Okay, the smoke was silly by Bran, but the fact that they don't get properly punished for it is just blowing my mind. Maybe this is just how Bran smell brain, and they're meant to be called brain esports. And they're like... Brain. <laughs> is Tiger how they spell no brain? They they want to be they want to be the team that wins the Oromor that beats Tyloo and uh, no, just no, not with the way they're playing. That was a really nice shot by Ooh. Wits. I can't fault Cabal for the attempt, but that maybe was a jump scare. Flick. <laughs> that's like flying. That that's like one of those those dreams where you wake up because something's about to hit you in the face or you're falling slam into the ground. Yeah. Well, another opening pick, Bren. Despite the mistakes they've been making, they are dragging this back. The individuals have stepped up. Derek's on 26 kills, by the way. After what was a, a, a okay first half, he's now starting to come into his own, and we're, we're starting to see the holes in this defense once again. Nine. It, he's forced into these aggressive angles because they consistently keep losing opening picks. Now, Cabal's aggression, yeah, that, that wasn't really that far forward. But in the last round, we also saw Dobu run out short, which not a fan of, especially if, if you're open to lower tunnels. His teammate's not really helping too much. Like There, there needs to be some more synergy with, with the pushes that they're making. Nice shot from nine. We'll net them one. But now they're looking to try and pincer him from short and long. Again, they've only got one smoke, though. And they... Okay, oh, they actually don't really do anything to deny it. They make that work relatively well, much better than what we saw in the last round. 
Incendiary going to go over from Dobu. Of course, this is a, a three versus four situation. So they need a kill quick or they give it up. And that's yeah. exactly what they do. You, you mentioned waking up from a, a nightmare, right? You're falling. I I just remembered. I had to chuckle to myself there. I just rem remembered when I moved into this house, I had, uh, I had these really weird dreams where I... <laughs> <laughs> I was awake in bed and at the foot of the bed like on top of the covers where my feet were there was this like puppy sized spider like big gigantic thing not like not like a dog like not even a puppy like a small dog big heavy thing and so I would wake up like jump awake and think that was real life and start like kicking my feet to like throw it off to the floor and my girlfriend wakes up and is like what's wrong with you I'm like there's a spider there's like scream i happened two nights in a row uh that was it was the weird i don't know why and and the interesting thing is that's also the second time in your relationship she said what do you mean it's so small i can't see it <laughs> oh i'm laughing but i'm crying i told you that in confidence Sam. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, it was weird. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what that was. I don't know why it happened, but dude, it was, it was the scariest thing ever. Like it was the biggest spider I'd ever seen in my life. Like what you'd imagine the dinosaur ages. If you've not seen Harry Potter, the spider is in that pretty big. True, true. It was not that big. Okay. On the T side, continue their comeback, but all it takes is one from Tiger. They've gone for a reinvestment here. The double orb setup continues with Cabal reinvesting into the secondary. Again, we haven't really seen too much from it, excluding the, the round towards the beginning, but that's a nice shot from NCL. That's micro gone. Now, a lot of the last few rounds, the initial frag has been going the way of Bren. They've been able to work off the openers and then just pretty much trade it out from there. This is the first time we've seen the opposite. And Nine, he's got to be careful. Like, this is a position where you want to have the ability to fall back, especially because at the moment he knows that Long is clear. He has a teammate there, so he can afford to be at least a little bit more aggressive, but he doesn't have to worry too much. Just trying to avoid the flashbangs at the moment, and his teammate's actually going to throw one in himself, but they managed to get past his crosshair. And again, it looks like they're going to allow for an afterplant. They do have to be a little bit careful of Urkus, though. Ten seconds to get the bomb down. Nothing he can really do to deny that. But with how low every single player is, Mitch, this is looking good. But a nice shot from Wits might just turn the tide. Time's ticking away. It's time to get in here. And I mean, Wits, he's got quite a passive hold on long. They can get right up in their face before anything really happens for Wits on that AWP. There you go, two kills. And when he eventually oh, wow. goes through to find a kill, he gets nothing. That is uh, the end of the map. 16 to 12. And altogether, not that convincing. Realistically, this should have been more one-sided. Tiger 